seen a 40% drop across the board in the major index in the Chinese stock market. The Chinese economy really is the biggest economy in the world. They are the second largest owner of our debt behind the private uh, European-owned hedge fund run Federal Reserve. Right as the Chinese stock market went into nosedive this morning, the New York Stock Exchange had a, quote, glitch, not cyber-related, uh, cybercrime-related, we're told, uh, by the Securities and Exchange Commission, and it was shut down. We also had United Airlines flights grounded all morning with a total computer shutdown. Now, a couple things can be happening here. The Chinese stock market has been overvalued up 100% in the last year. The government openly pumps money into it. It's as phony as ours. So it's time for it to go down. The global economy is in deep trouble. The globalist, the big insiders, ride these things up and down. The Greece situation, the EU in trouble, all of this. It could be a coincidence, but my gut tells me that this is a cyber war between the U.S. and China. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there's too many coincidences and too many other weird, because I was looking earlier, other computer systems and other companies are having total computer failures as well. And China's having computer failures. So China has its stock market plunging, even though they're trying to prop it up. I mean, a huge whopping 40%. The New York Stock Exchange shuts down right as this begins. Was that them shutting it down to protect the market and lying to the public? I mean, used to, you know, they've, they've had market holidays before, 9-11 and other events. They could have just been honest about it and said, we're shutting it down to stop the contagion. But as an instinct now, they lie when the truth would serve them better. So did they, sh I'm going to ask Greg Palace right now. He doesn't like to speculate, but I'm going to ask him. Is it a cyber war? Is it a false flag to get cyber or homeland security takeover passed? Is it shutting down the stock market so that it doesn't get driven down, which is a normal procedure, and they're just lying to us? Or is it really just a glitch and all this is happening? Greg Palace, best-selling author, BBC and ABC News host, uh, investigative journalist, had a arrest warrant issued by homeland security eight years ago because he was showing toxic waste dumping in Louisiana. It was under the Patriot Act, showing that is a... Is a Infrastructure Protection Act violation. Uh, traveled to Greece many times during the last collapse. We, w we got him set up today to talk about Greece, the EU, what's happening on that front. But now, clearly, we're not being told the truth about the biggest shakeup in the markets we've seen since 2008, Greg Palace. You were formerly the top, one of the top federal crime investigators during the savings and loan and other events. So you're an expert on this. You know, live in New York City. What does your gut tell you is really going on right now, Greg Palast of gregpalast.com? Well, uh, as you know, you said it right. I don't speculate and I don't guess. Uh, so all I can do, but now I'm going to have to just, uh, all I can do is tell you what I believe and what I think is probably going on. But again, I would really have to investigate it. It has all the, the earmarks of, of a quick shutdown to stop a, an instant uh, collapse. Keep in mind at a tremendous amount, probably the majority of trades on the New York Stock Exchange are done automatically by computers. So if they sniff a beginning of a fall in stocks, broad fall, they, the, the computers themselves start uh, massively going into sell. Then you have what- an And they're programmed to shut down from what I've been told now. Yes, they have, there's a, so what happens is that when there's a certain imbalance between buy orders and sell orders. For example, there's a massive number of sell orders against uh, for ex uh, Western companies with big China holdings, which we're seeing right now. And also at the same time, the Greek banks have been closed and uh, they're shaky uh, in the European community. Uh, you can imagine that the robot traders, that the, the machines are, of course, all they're sensing is down, 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 sell, sell, sell. So I think that the, the stock exchange said, uh, pour some water on your computers, tell them to go relax and have a nap and come back later when things have settled. Uh, I think it's pretty clear what's happened. If you announce, of course, that you're shutting down to stop a panic, you've just, you're now going to create a panic. So you don't say we're stopping. Well, I agree with you, Greg. That's probably what happened. I give it about a 98% chance. But uh -huh. uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, they've, they've had stock market holidays before and admitted it. And in a way that restores confidence because they're being honest 
I mean, everybody knows this is a shutdown on purpose, so lying about it, I think, only hurts confidence more. Here's my question. In the yeah. past, they were more honest about this, weren't they? Why are they lying about it now? Well, let's let's assume that they are lying about that. Is they're not giving us the full story? I think it's it's about telling these automated uh, the companies that are robot uh, um, selling that the that the robo systems have to take a, a, a breather for a minute before they create a, an unstoppable momentum. Uh, I mean, look, um, as as the FBI once told me when I was investigating uh, uh, the the uh, the business with uh, Al Qaeda. Uh, there are some things that the public ought not to know. That's a quote from the uh, from the the official quote from the FBI when uh, I was investigating for BBC. So obviously they decide that this is one more case of something the public quote ought not to know. So uh, you should maybe you should be grateful that they you know stopped your four hundred one k from going lower than your shoelaces, Alec. Sure, but it shows how rigged the markets are. The Chinese don't even deny that their markets completely. Uh, fabricated, but it seems like this balancing act, this house of cards is going into an end game. Uh, a, a strong wind is coming. A storm is coming. Uh, what is your prognosis on the global economy and the real players involved in it? Well, I think the 1% is doing okay. They're going to protect themselves. And as you know, I've just been writing about Greece. In fact, I was writing, uh, doing something that, that very few people have done. I'm working with uh, Greek uh, journalists and experts uh, from Athens so that the article I, that that's at gregpalace.com is actually written, uh, you know, not only by myself, uh, where I've been working with Greeks for a long time, but uh, with my colleagues on the ground in Athens. The one percent are going to take care of themselves. You see this tremendous attack on Greece. So well, what's going on here with the euro when they're calling for massive so-called privatizations? Well, it's the elite taking all the pro all the properties private, the, the public beaches, the parks, the waterworks. The shipping. Yeah, let's be clear. It's not like they go out and buy some private land and then compete next to a city beach. They get it for pennies on the dollar yeah. on derivatives they sold the country. Explain how this scam works. Yeah, basically you have the arsonists, the guys who started the fire, buy up the stuff at the fire sale. Now, this started, okay, I in my book, Vulture's Picnic, I went through the a long investigation on this. What happened was is back in... Uh, in uh, the about 2004, five, six, Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan for both Spain and Greece and a couple of other nations were playing games where they were hiding the deficits of these nations by phony currency trades involving billions and tens of billions of dollars. It was just absolutely stunning. And, and so the entire nation of Greece was claiming it had only a 3% deficit when it had about a 6 or 7% deficit. Uh, the people that bought their bonds on good faith, when when this whole scam blew open, when a new government came in and said, oops, gee, this these books are dis completely dishonest, uh, as if they didn't know. Uh, well, Goldman Sachs ended up uh, uh, ended up taking a half billion dollar fee for running this scam. I, mean, I understand when I was an investigator with with the federal government, we used to put people in jail for this stuff. But I guess if you, you know, if it was a half a million, you'd go to the to prison. But, you know, if you get a half billion fee, it, you know, you just get a bonus. Uh, so the scam blew open. That re that forced Greece to now, because no one trusted them, to uh, uh, have to pay you serious fees, 14, 15, 16 percent to pay off their uh, their debts. And it's just like anyone else. It's not that Greeks are, you know, this whole idea that Greeks are a bunch of lazy people, that, they, that they're just ouzo drinking, olive pits spitting, lazy guys who retire when they're 36 is nonsense. It's pure bull. Yeah, it's pure bull. And just by the way, the information, look it up at the OECD, which is the site of the uh, of the Organization of Economically Developed Nations. Um, Greeks work more. Greeks who have jobs, there's 25 percent unemployment. Greeks who have jobs work 600 hours a year more than Germans who are. the. Uh, so Greeks work more than anyone in, in the. Uh, well, my parents, one of their favorite places to go is, is Greece. I've been to Europe, but never to Greece yet. I, I, and, 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 and they say they've been there and they say the Greeks are, are like working at 10 o'clock at night with uh, yep. with their gardens and growing their own food and truck farms and running a restaurant while they go out and catch the fish. And I mean, the, it's just not true. The Greeks are sitting around their butts. Yeah. And then the Germans actually work the fewest hours of any nation in the uh, in the uh, uh, developed world. And then and, and then they put out the meme. I'm not bashing Germans, but the government does that. The Greeks are lazy. 
Yeah, this whole idea that Greeks are lazy is good because it goes back to, to the kind of uh, Aryan nation business. It's it's basically there's a racial element in this, which is which you can smell a mile away. Well, you know? and that's actually true. Let's not forget Germany did invade Greece in 41 with paratroopers. Yeah. And and, all, and by the way, they borrowed they the Germans borrowed money with they owe Greece 11 billion dollars. They've never paid it back, by the way. And uh, now they're saying that the Greeks owe them. The problem of the euro, the problem of the euro is that it's, it's not a currency, it's a disease. And what's happened is that the Greeks, even the Greek current government, which it's really exciting to see a Greek stand up and say no. Uh, and by the way, we keep talking about the Greek crisis. Well, there's 25 percent unemployment in Greece, but there's almost that much in unemployment in Spain. And yet we don't talk about the Spanish crisis. It's not a crisis. It's resistance. The Spaniards have basically given up. They've just decided, look, we can't win. We can't beat the big powers. And so the poor Spaniards are, uh, you know, one in four is out of work. The others are under uh, underemployed. It's, it's a massive disaster in Spain. But we don't call it a crisis because basically they've agreed to the occupation by financial powers running the euro. Greece, the people have said no. On the other hand, they're, they're told if they get rid of the euro, that the sky will fall. Well, it's like lepers saying, we don't want leprosy, but we don't want to leave the leper colony. Well, wouldn't right. Greece just do good now with a devalued currency because they're based on tourism uh, and to leave the euro and just default, especially when they can never pay it? Stay there, Greg Pallast. I want to ask you who's behind it, some of the latest swindles going on, and what you think the next shoe to drop is. And then I want to get back into China and take a few calls from listeners. Questions for Greg Pallas, 800-259-9231 for first-time callers. Stay with us. Coming up after Greg Pallas leaves us, I'm going to play a report Leanne McAdoo did where she went out and interviewed Austinites, and most of them thought Greece deserved what was happening to them with, with no education about it. And to see people sitting on top of debt per capita bigger than Greece's, Saying, hey, it's their debt, they should pay it, shows the triumph of disinformation. Greg Pallast, uh, what's the next big shoe to drop? Again, investigative journalist joining us. And what are the latest uh, big mega banking scams that you're tracking? I can't, I can't give you too many hints about the, the scams I'm tracking at this moment, of course. Uh, but I, I will say that I'm looking into uh, some of the billionaires who are... Uh, who are taking down the, the U.S. And, of course, they're behind all the candidates, both Democratic and Republican sides. You have to be, not, uh, not every candidate, but um, the, the leading candidates. Uh, one of the big concerns I have is that the guys who crashed Wall Street are, um, are taking, are suddenly, uh, these hedge fund managers are, are hedging their bets by buying up candidates in a way that we haven't seen in prior elections, like uh, this guy Paul the Vulture Singer, uh, who is uh, a multi-billionaire who uh, basically one of the people who took down Greece. Um, and, you know, remember when I say they took down Greece, these are guys who bankrupted the nation and then, then demanded all their, uh, 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 demanded uh, their, um, their properties. And when, you know, we talk about bailouts of Greece, I want to make this clear. The European Central Bank, uh, in its $150 billion that it's supposedly given Greece, Greece got zero. I want to. Re this is very, very important for people to understand. Greece got zero. The money went to Deutsche Bank, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, uh, Cred uh, Credit Lyonnais, and other big banks which held Greek bonds. Basically, the European people paid off the debts of uh, the Greek debts held by these big banks, which were charging monster fees. And now they're saying, okay, they're telling the Greek people, now you have to bail out our bailout. And it's coming down to a massive per family uh, interest charges of, of ten to fifteen thousand dollars a year. And under Greek salaries, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's a mortgage that can't be paid. And Greg, notice the latest deal was a huge new added VAT on their only cash crop that's tourism. And the Greeks were like, wait a minute, you want to destroy us, but the documents you got back in 2002 showed that. This is what these groups want, is the collapse. So what will the globalist ultimately do to Spain and Ireland and France? I mean, what are the next countries that they're going to suck dry? Because just because Spain and others have run up the white flag, that never keeps the vampires from draining you. 
No, that's just the beginning. They're, they're basically going to be taking all these assets. In the case of Greece, by the way, one of the big assets that they were trying to grab is uh, Greece has tremendous offshore gas resources. And at the moment, obviously, the natural gas market has, has, has collapsed. But believe me, they're going to be going after those resources. Uh, and, you know, we see in Ireland, Ireland actually has gold. Um, they're they're going to be going after those resources. Spain has resources. So basically, they're they're draining these nations. They're they're draining these nations of their public uh, of their public treasury, and that's what's happening. And the you know when you're talking about 25 percent unemployment, it also means 50 percent unemployment among young people. There's no future for them. There's no future for them. And this is and you know this is what happens. Then then we see like violence and global reaction. We wonder where does that come from. Uh, you know, you can only squeeze people. So oh, yeah, hard. you watch Davos, and they've got Soros' guy going, it's terrible, we need to redistribute wealth, but they're talking about the middle class's money to the poor. There is going to be no middle class. Where are all these robber barons going to live when they've imploded every nation? <laughs> well, uh, uh, Mark Rich was in the move to Switzerland after uh, um, Bill Clinton gave uh, the multi-billionaire bandit a, uh, a pardon. And so he lived there virtually uh, tax free. Uh, there's a, there, so that's what they're doing. In the case of Kenneth Dart, one of the guys who took down Greece, by the way, Kenneth Dart was one. It was a vulture investor. Uh, here's an American, or he was. I shouldn't say. I, I shouldn't call him an American because he'll probably sue me. He was born in America. His business. He's the guy who makes the solo styrofoam cups, and and he's made billions of dollars through stock market operations. And, and vulture tax on poor nations. He um, gave up his American citizenship. He took Belize citizenship. He's never been to Belize in his life, as I understand it, but he's now the Belize ambassador to the United States. So he lives in the United States tax-free and immune from arrest because he's so-called not, he's supposedly not an American citizen. And as diplomatic immunity, that's globalism 101 yeah. with Greg Palast, gregpalast.com. Promise to come back soon and break down uh, your predictions of 2002 that have now basically come true. Amazing job. Thank you so much, Greg Palast. Yeah. All right, we've got Harry Dent uh, joining us. Uh, coming up, who made the prediction on the China situation, your phone calls, and the powerful speech of 9-11.